Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 847. My opponent started off with e4, and I decided to play the uh, French defense here with e6. So we get a couple normal moves, d4, d5. And he plays knight d2, the trash variation. You can see that's the second choice here. And there's kind of two main ways to play it. I've never tried this uh, bishop e7 move, so there <laughs> are these other moves, but the, the top two I've tried. Uh, you can play with c5 or with knight f6. Knight of six would lead to a typical kind of French structure, especially if uh, white pushes the pawn, whereas c5 leads to a more open position. So it's a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, maybe not what white is expecting here. Uh, I just mentioned that uh, white, during the game, I mentioned that white can give black a uh, isolated pawn. And that's this line if he um, takes here instead of... Uh, playing c3. Let's see, it's e takes d5. I take back, and he develops his knight. He doesn't take right away, because if he takes right away, that sort of helps me develop my bishop, and uh, black is going to get a good isolated queen's pawn position, meaning he'll have uh, active pieces in any case, but you don't want to make it any better. Uh, so black just keeps developing uh, white pens. Let's see, black brings the bishop out, and now that this uh, bishop has moved, uh, white takes because uh, basically that uh, saves the tempo for white or costs black a tempo to recapture the pawn. So um, so compared to if he had taken right away, I'm, I'm a tempo down. Uh, but it's still a decent position for black. And that's just what I was referring to in the game. But he didn't play that way. After uh, c5, he went to c3. You can see that's a pretty rare move. And I took, and, and that is actually the approved response here. I wasn't sure. I hadn't seen that before. Uh, but the main follow-through is to go ahead and uh, take on uh, e4. He'll have to recapture with the knight, which is already a developed piece. So in a way, you're not really helping his development that much. He's just causing the move an already developed piece another time. Uh, and you saddle white with the isolated queen spawn, and it seems like uh, that's pretty decent for black. So if this happens again, that's probably the way I'll play it. Anyway, I continued with uh, knight f6, and we get this typical French kind of position when he pushes on with the, the blocked center, where uh, it's just this trade happened on c5. Uh, the, the trade of the two c-pawns, I guess, uh, has happened a little bit earlier than usual, but uh, nothing, nothing terrible has gone wrong here. So it should be playable for both sides. Bishop d3 is the main move here, but... Uh, there's nothing wrong with the move he played. It's just not not in the opening book because we're in kind of an, a, a place in the book where there's not many games. But uh, all this uh, seems to be fine. So let's see. It would have been better if, if I had taken. I would have equalized. But now, now white has a typical kind of opening advantage. Um, let's see. I continue here developing. Knight c6 goes a3. Keeps my knight from coming into the b5, and also he has ideas of pushing his queenside pawns, which he does very quickly. I play uh, yeah, b4, I guess I should have said, not b5. Um, I, I develop, and he plays b4. And I think about this for a while. I'm, I wasn't sure if this was a threat or not, b4 to b5, because I thought I could maybe maneuver my knight around like this. But at the moment, the way his pieces are set up, uh, and I would just lose a pawn. So if I can't really play there, um, you know, what is the knight doing out on the rim? So I guess uh, defending is okay here, just uh, stopping him from pushing that pawn forward. And now he gets his knight to b3, which was, I guess, white's plan. He's trying to get these pawns forward, but also get this knight to a position where it uh, defends the center very solidly. So I go about undermining the center with f6, typical kind of strategy. And here I thought about knight f6, but it turns out, um, and the computer agrees with me, that the bishop f6 is just a better move. The bishop is a pretty active piece on this uh, diagonal. It's not only looking at the pawn, but also behind it there's that uh, rook potentially. So so things can happen on that diagonal. And, uh, and also this knight uh, may be useful over here on the queen side. Maybe I want to trade off his knight if it hops into this square at some point. So uh, all in all, this seems like the best way to take back with the bishop. He goes bishop to d3 here. Um, the chess engine did not like that one so much. Somewhere around here, the, the situation goes from being uh, typical opening advantage to white but to being slightly better for black. Uh, you know, kind of goes back and forth, so it's not consistently better for black. But it seems like somehow I've equalized, and maybe this is 
one of the places where he could have played a little differently. Uh, Chess Engine is suggesting the move bishop b2, I guess with the idea of uh, trying to clamp down on the e5 square, because I did eventually manage to play e5, and that seems to be uh, pretty good, um, a pretty good outcome for black after e5. In fact, the Chess Engine thinks I should play e5 immediately, but uh, well, I castled here. He castled, and then I went with this e5 move. So that seems to be the right choice, pushing on in the center, uh, accepting that I'm going to have an isolated pawn, but it's different than the typical isolated queen's pawn because there's no pawn on uh, c3 after this trade. Well, let's go on. Another move. So d takes e5. Uh, let's see, I took with this knight. Yeah, so now you can see it. I have this isolated pawn. Typically, uh, white will have a pawn here on c3. Well, sometimes it's on uh, e3, but one of those two pawns will be useful in restraining the isolated queen's pawn, and then, then white can mount, uh, you know, add up, try and build up pressure on it while using this pawn to restrain it. But now there's no, no pawns uh, on either side to restrain this, so this is just a, a passed pawn. And uh, in the end game, a passed pawn like that is, is, uh, could be a winning advantage, and even in the middle game, it can be uh, pretty dangerous. So, uh, so this is uh, an okay position for black. I think the chess engine is starting to like black better at this point. Uh, let's see, he kept trading. Knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't mind this too much. And he, then he dropped his bishop back to c2 because it brings my knight to a good square. Uh, in general, when you have the isolated queen's pawn, you don't want all those trades because you're uh, kind of kind of banking on your greater activity to compensate for the weakness of the isolated queen's pawn. But in this case, because it's a pass pawn, I don't think I have to. I have that weakness to worry about. The the trades just get me closer to an end game where I have an advantage. So so I guess I, I should not be afraid of those trades. Let's see. Uh, I continued with the bishop to g4, getting my bishop out and provoking uh, this f3 move, which is a weakness. Now I have some ideas of checking along this diagonal with if that's ever useful it can allow me to unpen with tempo and maybe um, and maybe there'll be some tactics if white isn't careful so I'm happy to see that I dropped my bishop back to h5 thinking well, I can run back to um, f7 here if necessary let's see he played rook b1 this is another move the chess engine criticized um, not so easy to see why. Let's see. It, it liked the move bishop to e3 here. Bishop to e3. Um, and if I play the move knight c4, then it plays bishop d4. So I think it wants to keep keep the rook on this diagonal and just uh, try and trade off this powerful bishop I have on f6. So that seems like a reasonable plan. I'm just not so sure why rook b1 would be considered a bad move, but... Um, it, it uh, really likes black after this. So knight c4, he goes uh, knight to c5, and I went b5. I could have defended the pawn. The, the chess engine actually gives rook a7 or rook f7 as alternatives there, and it might be a little better even. Rook a7, you know, just looks like a strange move, but uh, if you play rook a7, you're probably going to play that with the idea of playing b5 later. Uh, maybe Maybe you play b6 later to kick the knight, and then you just open up the second rank for the rook to come across. So it might make sense if he does that. Let's see. Uh, he moved his king off this diagonal now, so getting rid of some tactics. Um, I played rook to e8, putting the rook on an open file. And he went rook e1. And this this is another move that the chess engine questioned. Um, it, although, although uh, it, like I said, it's starting to like black already here. So the alternative it gives looks pretty funny, uh, rook to b3. Not a very uh, natural looking move. Anyway, rook d1, trying to contest the e-file. Uh, let's see, I played queen d6, which is okay. He went uh, knight to d3. And now here's the point of why the engine doesn't like rook e1. Um, and the exchange could have happened instead of queen d6 too, although I think uh, these lines would have transposed because after the exchange, it wants to play queen d6 next. So I'll play those moves in some order. So I take, he takes. Um, I can play bishop to g6. Uh, well, preparing to trade off the light squared bishop, I guess, if this knight moves. Maybe putting some pressure here. Um, bishop to f4, hitting my queen. Uh, queen to b6. Rook to d1. Rook to e8, hitting his queen. So that 
move has probably been lurking <laughs> at the back of uh, my mind for a while as soon as I saw that uh, the, the bishop is defending the square and his queen is there. It makes sense, but the chess engine throws in a few other moves in between. So the queen runs out to g3 and then knight takes a3. So it's hard to say that that was all forced. I mean, in that line, white voluntarily moved his rook away from defense of the a-pawn, but maybe the uh, chess engine felt it was more important to get an active rook than to hold on to these pawns on the queen side. But clearly this line just uh, ends with black being a pawn up and uh, and white not having much to show for it. So that's uh, that's how the chess engine would play for both sides from this position. Anyway, I just continued with the d4. Push that past pawn. Uh, he went knight to f4 here. I dropped the bishop back. I didn't want to trade it. I think this is going to be... Uh, the two bishops can be very useful, especially in conjunction with the passed pawn, because they can cover all the squares uh, that the pawn needs to, to traverse to uh, reach the eighth rank. So, uh, so it's useful to keep those. It's useful to keep the bishop pair in most cases, but especially when you have a, a passed pawn like that. Okay, so he goes uh, rook to g1 here, um, avoiding the trade, I guess for now. Um, I went. Knight to e3. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't go to the f1 square if he was thinking about it, because it would run into a fork. Although he could just trade, and he does decide to trade. But this gives me the bishop pair advantage. I have the bishop pair, and he doesn't. So that's a, a concession from White. Um, let's see. He goes knight to knight to d3, blockading the pawn. The knight is a good blockader there, so not bad. Um, I play rook a to e8, just lining my rooks up on the e file. And I, yeah, I think I have a pretty decent position here. And I think uh, in a long time control, I would probably go on to win. But the, the position stayed very complicated, and I had spent a lot of time thinking about things. And before too long, I start to feel the pressure and start making some uh, mistakes. Anyway, uh, let's see, he brought his rook back to e1. Let's see, I wasn't sure I wanted to take that just... Um, I guess he would take back with the knight, but I couldn't tell if that accomplished much. I'd rather, you know, get rid of that knight if I could. Um, so I went with bishop to c4 here, just trying to put pressure on it, you know, clear the obstacles out of the way of the pawn. Um, he went queen to d2, lifting his queen up so his rooks are connected, and now if I trade, he just brings another rook over, so that seems pretty pointless again. Um, I went queen d7 here. Let's see, the chess engine is recommending queen e6. And I think, yeah, this is, if I had had more time, I might have found this. Once again, I wasn't sure that just trading out here was such a good idea, so I didn't know if uh, if I wanted to do this or not. But uh, he's a little bit tied down. He probably doesn't want to trade either and go into an endgame. So the chess engine is recommending a move like this, rook over to d1, and then bishop to h4. And this uh, basically forces some kind of concession. He either has to uh, start trading here or uh, play some weakening pawn move um, or move his rook aside and just give up control of the uh, e-file to me. So so this uh, is good play from the chess engine. That, that's uh, Maybe if I had had time to think about it, I, I would have found something like that. Anyway, I went to queen d7. I was just kind of meandering a little bit with my pieces. <laughs> He goes uh, knight to c5 now. Yeah, I mean, the queen queen d7 just sort of walked into this. And then I went uh, queen c6. I was holding on to this pawn. And uh, that move, well, just to show another idea here, uh, you know, I was worried about him taking the pawn. But in fact, after he takes his pawn, the his knight is out of play. So the chess engine says uh, queen c7 is, is a good move here. And if he actually takes the, the pawn, which is not best, he's better off doing something else. Um, then queen f4 <laughs> sets up some dangerous threats. Uh, chief, the chief threat is rook takes uh, e1 check, which would uh, win the queen because the queen's not defended there. It's a discovered attack on the queen. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and the queen can't take the rook because it's protected by the other rook. So it'll lose basically a queen for a rook. Um, so he takes. I take with the rook, setting up uh, some more threats, I guess, on this diagonal. Well, I don't know if there's a huge threat here, but I could consider something like rook f3, defending my queen and just winning a pawn, once again taking advantage of the fact that his queen is undefended. 
Um, so queen to c1, moving the queen where it's defended, getting rid of those tactics, and now bishop to uh, e5. And so that was the idea, is uh, getting on this diagonal. And, um, you know, if he pushes the g-pawn forward, I can take the f-pawn, so the queen has to come over and defend. And this is certainly uh, uh, a uh, winning looking attack for uh, for black. I don't know how exactly it goes, but uh, I would certainly love to have a position like this. So that would be uh, a good example of how to play. Instead, I played queen c6, which uh, defends the pawn, but, you know, it allows him to chase me around again. For example, he could have played uh, bishop to e4 here. He didn't, but he could have played this. And uh, let's see, that chess engine gives this line. All right, the, the rook was not really hanging there, but uh, yeah, I would lose the pawn if I just left it there. So I have to take, and um, and then queen, dropping the queen down to c8. I guess that uh, defends the pawn and gets away from the bishop. So anyway, uh, that's that's how the chess engine would play that. Um, but he didn't uh, he didn't play bishop e4. He played rook takes e3, and now now I'm back to uh, to the advantage I had. I took with the pawn here this time. Well, before the pawn was pinned, so I had to take with the rook. But now this this looks like a good move, taking with the pawn and getting one step closer to queening. He dropped his queen back to e1, getting it in front of the pawn. And now I went uh, bishop to d4. And this is kind of thing that happens in time trouble, but there's actually a tactic here if you guys want to see if you can spot it. Yeah, this uh, white has the move, bishop takes h7 check, and if I take it, and the queen comes out with check, and then uh, I go back and he grabs this uh, this bishop. So he picked up a pawn. The chess engine still thinks I'm slightly better here with this uh, dangerous passed pawn and bishop versus a knight, but uh, it's, it's much closer to even, whereas uh, in this position, if I don't play bishop d4 and play something like uh, e2, that was the top choice, uh, then I'm just winning. So anyway, I, I make a blunder, but my opponent doesn't spot it either. I guess he's also in a bit of time trouble. He plays knight e4, and, uh, and then I do play e2. And, then, and also that tactic is no longer on, in the cards. Let's see, but he plays queen h4. He's, he's obviously thinking about these ideas. He's getting his queen and his bishop lined up on my h7 square. And, um, you know, and I'm just out of time at this point. I'm down to seconds, and I played a... Uh, kind of silly move, but I couldn't couldn't find anything else. So let's um, let's find the quickest win from here. Um, it's Bishop A2. Although you know it looks like a double attack, although it's not that simple because the the rook can move and defend the bishop, and uh, and then if you bring the other bishop in to keep chasing the rook, there's a huge backfire with Bishop to B3 check, winning the queen. So you do have to be careful here. So after Bishop to a2 and rook to c1. You retreat this bishop to f7. And uh, let's see, he brings his queen back to e1 to uh, blockade this pawn. Then you can play uh, bishop to b2 now and, and win some material. So this bishop a2 does win material. It, it is a winning move, but uh, it takes some calculation and there's still some tricks there. So that's the problem with uh, being out of time is, uh, you know, you can if it's uh, if you're down to an end game where you can snap out all the moves instantly, then it's okay uh, because I always have the increment. I play with the increment setting, but uh, the, the four second increment is just not enough time for me to figure out complicated positions like this. So, so I just had to, uh, if I wanted to play like this, I had to play faster earlier, or get get to uh, uh, leave more time on my clock to think about uh, positions like this. Anyway, so queen h6 is just a silly move, but actually still keeps an advantage. So after queen takes, I take back. He played g3, and then I just lost on time. I mean, one advantage of uh, playing a move like that is it does reduce the material and make it makes it easier for me to uh, find moves. But even <laughs> even here, I couldn't couldn't find the move. Let's see. I think I was uh, considering this move, bishop to uh, f7. Um, but that would not actually uh, win anymore. He would he could play bishop to d3 and round up the pawn. So so that's not a good move, uh, although it doesn't lose, but uh, it gives up the winning edge. Um, the uh, move, probably the uh, simplest move to uh, 
keep a winning edge is to play bishop to c3. And maybe I would have found this if I had thought about it long enough. The point is that uh, if he takes the bishop, you can queen. So you're, you're giving up a bishop, but you're gaining a rook. And, uh, and so now you're up the exchange, and uh, you can use the rook to um, you know, round up these pieces. After the check, I guess you can go here and skewer those guys. So that, that would be uh, <clears throat> that would be winning. Uh, the chess engine actually says the best move is rook to c8. Maybe setting up some ideas like this uh, discovered attack again. Um, but it's, uh, like I said, a complicated position. Anyway, the last move of the game was g3, and I ran out of time, so I ended up losing. But it was still an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you soon.